What's up, everyone, and welcome back to a very special episode. This is the fifth total episode, and overall, this is the second episode of season two. So very special. Um, as you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, I have no one around me. It's just me talking with you guys today, and um, I'm very blessed. Thank you for joining in, and I can't wait to share my story with you all. So welcome to the, from the Lions Cove podcast, FTLC podcast. Um, for those that don't know or are new to this channel, um, Leone means lion in Italian. So that's where from the Lions Cove comes from. And I, and I didn't want to use the lions then. I feel like that's kind of basic. So this is from the Lions Cove podcast. Um, but today I will be sharing my basketball story, my basketball journey. Uh, I feel like I've been interviewing others and I really haven't shared my story with you all. And, um, you know, this, I don't know if this instance per se has happened to a lot of people, but I know it has for sure. And hopefully um, you can kind of relate to this. I'm not asking for pity. I'm not asking for, you know, forgiveness, for sadness, happiness. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't want anything. I just want to share my story with you all and just talk about it because uh, it's something important that kind of happened in my life. And, you know, hopefully this story can help someone out there that is going through this. And, uh, yeah, my goal is just to impact people in any way I can in a positive way. And, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. But everything I say is pretty much true. I have notes. And, uh, for example, this happened to me, so I can definitely recall some of these moments. Um, looking back on it, I have a bunch of notes right here. Kind of, uh, kind of hard to read. And, um, yeah, it's crazy. So, everything I say is true. I'm not asking for any pity, anything like that. This happened three to five years ago um, in high school. And today I'm a senior in college, and uh, I'm blessed to be in this position. So let's get into this podcast, and uh, let's go. I'll share my journey. So my name is Marcelo Leone. I started playing basketball when I was four years old, and ever since I was little, I always had a basketball in my hand. Um, my parents would tell me that. I would always say, I shoot the ball, I shoot the ball, because... You know, obviously, when you're four years old, you can't really put a whole lot of sen sentences together. And, uh, yeah, I would say that all the time. And You know, I always had a dream of playing basketball, and um, that's something that's always been important in my family's life as well. Uh, today, my family is a big basketball family. We love going to Cavs games. We love watching hoops together, um, whether that's on, like, a Monday night, Sunday night, whenever. We'll just sit down, talk basketball, and watch hoops. You know, my mom, my dad, my sister, uh, we're all very close. We're very tight, and I'm very blessed. And I thank God for that every single day. Um, my dad, when he was little, he had a basketball hoop with, like, a wooden crate. And uh, he'd always shoot hoops in his driveway. And in high school, he was pretty good, won conference. Um, he says he's still better than me, but he says my offense is better. But, um my dad's defense was very good. Uh, he was very quick, very fast, very skilled, and um, he played with a lot of great people. And My dad's mid-range is undefeated. Um, all my best friends know that. Uh, my dad likes to shoot mid-ranges, and he, he always makes them no, no matter what, whether that's in the driveway or somewhere else. Um, my dad definitely, uh, my definitely was a real bucket for sure. So he played in high school, and... Um, he likes to say he wasn't really good enough to make it to the next level, but I feel like my dad definitely could. Um, you know, my dad's a very humble man, and uh, he's my role model, and I look up to him every single day. I always try to be great like him, and um, I'm definitely his biggest fan. And, you know, obviously my mom and my sister are too, but um, obviously that father-son bond is always strong between us, and, uh, you know, that's like that's like my guy. That's like my best friend. and. Um, you know, he's had my back through a lot throughout this journey and I'm very thankful for him and I thank God every day for people around me. So, um, yeah, so I started playing when I was four years old, I ended up playing travel basketball with some of my best friends. Um, that, that was from like the third grade to the sixth grade. I'm sure I'll do a whole recap ab about that and just talk about that, um, experience. And that was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, my dad was our team coach for 
three to from third to sixth grade so yeah long time but um you know i remember after every game we'd go get mcflurries we'd go to restaurants like danny boys and we have so many so many memories but um the third grade uh, i didn't really have a passion for basketball uh, i was just that kid that loved to play the weed loved to go outside read books draw color um i never really focused on basketball as like my, my other friends my other friends would be ready before games me, I would kind of just, you know, get ready 20 minutes before and not really prepare, show up late. and I wouldn't really play my best, and I never really put my best foot forward. Um, a lot of coaches back then uh, during tryouts always told me, my father, that I would never make the A team. I'd always be a B player, and um, I just was never good enough to compete. And, you know, when you're young at that time, you don't really realize it. But, um, you know, my father always pushed me to be great, always pushed me to work hard. And I feel like from the third to the sixth grade, I showed some potential for sure. Uh, we had great games, won a championship. And, um, you know, I worked somewhat hard, uh, but I definitely didn't give as much effort as I should have. And uh, I still regret that to this day. Uh, I even told my parents that for sure. Um, my mom would always have to yell at me after games, and once she would yell at me, then I would go on the court and drop like 15, 16 and play so good. So I would just need that extra motivation, but that should have never happened in the first place. Um, so that's a life lesson when I'm older. I'll definitely teach my kid and, um, you know, just to always work hard and, you know, still be, still be a kid, but at the same time have some passion too. But um, my love for the game didn't really grow then. I was just kind of just going through the motions and all that stuff. Then seventh grade basketball came. Um, I was like the seventh, eighth guy off the bench. Still really didn't have a love for the game. Just loved playing it. And um, just loved being around my friends. Loved being around my teammates. And then the eighth grade came around. And, um, you know, I was the first person off the bench, so six man. And I would kind of rotate in and out starting. Um, I had a lot of opportunities to start, to score a lot of points, and just never really contributed. I mean, I scored probably eight points a game between my seventh and eighth grade year, which honestly isn't horrible, but, I mean, for not really loving the game, not putting a whole lot of work in, um, you know, that's, it's, it's okay. Um, my parents really expected more out of me, and, you know, I never really could really push myself over the edge and really work hard and um, we had a great team that year too we went like 22 and one and we won the conference um so that that was awesome as well i was surrounded by great teammates great friends and you know that's truly what, what, what was important to me that's truly what was important to me at the time and uh, i'm very thankful for that and uh you know we ended up winning the conference ended up beating brush and that was that was awesome beat Rip riverside those were two tough teams and definitely our rivals for sure but um yeah just looking back on it i wish i really could have worked harder and i had a lot of missed opportunities um obviously you know coaches do have their favorites but um you know i didn't really prove you know that i should be starting or get opportunities and when those opportunities came I didn't really perform well enough, and I went right back to the bench. So that was that's something that I really could have, you know, improved on, and really could have worked on that. So um, just a lot of life lessons. But uh, the eighth grade to ninth grade was really the turnaround in, in my life, I would say, for basketball. Um, you know, I would just watch highlights all the time. I just became passionate with the game. Um, you know, NBA Two K Seventeen that was pretty popular around the time, and just basketball world the Cavs won the championship I'm a Cleveland boy so seeing that, seeing that the Cavs won the championship and just all the basketball stuff that was happening in our society just made me love the game even more even more than I did when I was little and you know my uncle and I'll never forget I was at my cousin's grad party and my uncle said you know Marcelo like you have the potential to be like the next LeBron James like, obviously, I'm not going to be like LeBron. I mean, like, LeBron is LeBron's one of the greatest of all time. And, you know, he was saying that not like, you know, you can be LeBron, but more so as, you know, you can work hard. Like, you can 
work hard and just become that all-around player like LeBron is. You can reach heights you've never even reached before. And, you know, I was never athletic, really. I wasn't really too coordinated. Um, I was always tall, lanky, and just, you know, could always shoot the ball. Couldn't really drive, you know, couldn't really do a whole lot. wasn't really quick. And um, so that summer, I went um, to CrossFit. A lot of my boys still make fun of me uh, to this day about going to CrossFit, but um, yeah, CrossFit uh, definitely changed changed my life. So from the eighth to the ninth grade, I started doing CrossFit. Got a lot of advice from my parents, family, friends, and um, just had a little workout routine. I would you know put two chairs out right in front, and you know do one move, like cross over one, cross over the other, lay up, or and then I would do like you know tween tween shot and just work from layups mid-range floaters threes like just expand my all-around game that's what I did every night like how just triple dribble dribble until my parents told me to come inside and those are some of the best days of my life I remember just working so hard and just imagining all of those moves paying off in an actual game and uh, I'll never forget that um that summer was awesome just going to CrossFit and a lot of my friends made fun of me for going to CrossFit just because they all played football but um you know, going to CrossFit was one of the best. I've met some amazing people. I'm so thankful for all of them. I love them. I love them to death. They're still my family uh, for life. And, you know, I'm always so thankful for them. And I really owe, you know, all the hard work and dedication and all that to them. And they're all just great people. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just so thankful for them. But um, CrossFit pretty much helped each and every year with just strength, conditioning, staying in shape lifting uh, i was that kid that would just dance to drake you know i'm a big drake fan i would dance to drake they would play the tunes and i was that person at the end of every workout just to hype everyone up show some love just you know be just be just the all-around teammate and crossfit really helped with that also too i was surrounded by a great group of people and i was the youngest person there i was i think 15 at the time and everyone else was like 21, 30, 25, like all older. And it was it was just a blessing. Like it, it really was just being the youngest one there. And obviously now there's a lot of young people that go to CrossFit. So it's very cool seeing like the change. And um, they definitely left an impact on my life forever. Um, but going back to the basketball side, starting my ninth grade year, I was ready. I was kind of ready to lead this team. And I had two great coaches. Shout out to them because they really helped. Um, they really helped with, you know, the tryout process. Um, they told me I had a lot of potential going in. And, uh, you know, I was a scorer, so they were going to help me score the ball more and just, you know, leave an impact on, on the game that people, you know, could see and um, just help contribute to a team that, you know, lost as one of its best players. Josh Irwin transferred to a different school. And uh, he was six six five, I think. I think he's like six five, six six now. But he transferred to um, like West Geauga, so that you know that hurt losing him. He's a great teammate, great friend. But um, you know, freshman year it was kind of that time to just come back and start fresh and start off with a new team and still the same group of guys, but losing a few more. And yeah, just just that tryout really just changed everything for me. I remember going into our first game versus Nordonia freshman year. Um, I had like five points, seven points, nine points around then, and we lost by 30. And, um, you know, we were very unprepared for that game. We thought we were ready, and uh, they came out, just beat us by 30. So then the next few games, we truly lit it up. I was averaging probably around 15 points a game, playing my best, and just calm, cool, and collected. And I was really turning into the player that I've always should have been. Uh, when I was a kid, but, um, you know, it's it's always God's timing, and during that time, I was playing some of the best basketball of my life, uh, created a lot of memories, great friends, and I'll never, never forget my cousin, um, you know, he, he was leaving to go to the military, and the last day, uh, we, had, we had a game, and first home game, I scored 20 points on the day that, um, the day before he was leaving. And it was just so special, man. It was so special. And I remember texting him the, 
game before I played horrible and I said, you have to come to this one. Like, I'm going to make it count. And I really did not That's something that will stick with me. Um, scored a lot of 20-point games um, my freshman year and overall led our team, um, along with my other teammates, to a 20-2 and two record, which is very good. Probably one of the best in Mayfield basketball history. So I'm very thankful for that. And, man, what a time. Then my sophomore year kind of went through um, a lot of change, I would say. Uh, the change between, you know, varsity skill players as well as freshman skill players. And JV's kind of like that middle. And JV was, you know, a lot of fun. We had a lot of great, we had a lot of great times. Uh, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll be talking about that soon. But, man, my boy KJ comes in off the bench, drops 10. Drops 10 against our rival, Riverside. And he blocks this dude. Like, literally, the ball is off the backboard. He just stuffs him. And, you know, shout out my best friend, Corey, too. Comes off the bench, started one pull mafia because Corey didn't really play a whole lot. But, you know, you know when Corey was in there, he was going to shoot it. So whenever he would just get the ball, he would pull from three, and he would say, one pull, and he would cash it. So shout out my boys, Corey and KJ. Uh, they made that, that year very special, and uh, I'm very thankful for them, and I love them. So freshman year was tough because there was just a lot of transition, a lot of just like um, not just anxiety, but a lot of pressure on myself. I always put pressure on myself to be better and to, you know, be the best that I can be. And, you know, that sophomore year, I actually had a weird kind of game. So I remember it was versus North um, High School. Going into the game, I was ready. And, you know, um, you know, when I was a freshman, I had talks moving up to JV, and I felt like if I kept that route on JV, I probably could have ended up on varsity on my 10th grade year. Um, but during this North game, I remember subbing into the game, and my legs felt like rocks. Like, I literally couldn't move. Um, I was scared. I didn't really know what was really going on. Um, coach takes me out. I say, Coach, like, um, I'm not really feeling too hot. Um, just... I don't know, it was just a weird game and ended up sitting on the bench pretty much the whole game. Just kind of went through a crazy little stint right there and just had, felt like I had blocks like tied to my feet and I was just walking and it was just heavy. It was hard to breathe and I didn't really know where I was. And I remember going outside and I was like, Mom, like, I, I, I have to quit basketball. Like, that was one of the scariest things I've ever went through. My mom was at Marcelo, like, what happened and all this stuff and I was like I don't know like I felt just lightheaded just you know a lot of just anxiety just a lot of just you know um a lot of just stress a lot of pressure on myself and that's when I kind of learned like you know I need to take it back a little bit I need to realize you know this is for fun this is just for you know like I don't really I didn't really have that passion to play in college yet and I was just having fun. I was trying to find out, you know, who I was as, as a player and as a person as well. Uh, those are growing times in your life. And, you know, as a high school kid, you don't really know, you know, a whole lot yet. Um, but during that time, that was very scary. And that was something that um, it's kind of hard to look back on just going through that time. And, yeah, but after that, uh, my 10th grade year was all right. Um, we went like thir 9 and 13. 10 and 14, I don't know, something around there. We had a losing record, but we didn't, we didn't really, um, we didn't really, you know, do our best as we did going from 20 and 2 to 10 and 13. That's really not that good. Um, we had a lot of high expectations for ourselves, and we didn't really have that. But uh, going into my junior year, I was, I, was, I was hungry. I was hungry for sure. Going to summer league, um, I was pretty hungry. I was playing with the varsity guys. And um, so now that was ninth and 10th grade year. Now we're looking at my junior year. So going into my junior year of high school, um, I was hungry. I was ready. All my, all my coaches, you know, freshman, sophomore, they, they, all, they all knew that I was hungry. And they let the varsity coaches know, even the players too. They even knew that I was hungry. I was ready to compete. I was ready to ball out. And, um, that showed in the, in the summer league games. Um, I was just ready. I was, you know, fighting with the older guys. Not really fighting, but you know what I mean. Like fighting as in like working hard. I was competing with them. And um, 
you know, just trying to earn that spot. I was really trying to earn that earn that varsity spot, uh, whether that was starting or coming off the bench early. Either way, I wanted to be one of those key players. And, you know, I worked so hard, so hard. All the players knew it. All the coaches knew it. Um, so going into that year, I was pretty ready. I felt good. I was in great shape. And I worked super hard, very hard. Um, I'll not, never forget one of my teammates, Denzel. I love Denzel. If you're watching this, I, I love you, bro. Always had my back since day one. And Denzel, uh, he'd always tell everyone, man, like, you know, Marcelo's like the best shooter on this court. Marcelo's the best scorer. Marcelo, you know, he really hyped me up. And, you know, he really put that confidence in me for those older guys to really be the best and, you know, to just show off my game and truly be myself out there when I was, when I was playing on, on the court. Um, so Denzel uh, really had a big impact. And a lot of other teammates really wanted me to succeed. I'm very thankful for them. But, um, yeah, so going into tryouts, um, tryouts went great. It was awesome. Um, obviously, earned a varsity spot. I was very happy about that. Uh, three weeks in, I'm starting in practice. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited. I mean, I'm starting over some seniors, you know, even some of my junior teammates. And I was, I was so hyped. I was like, you know, let's go. It's my time to shine. Uh, we had a few practices, a few scrimmages. I played great in those. Um, those were awesome. I even had a, I had a crazy block, like crazy off the backboard block. Boom. It was awesome. Like the guy was going on a fast break lay. I'm running down the court. Boom. Block it. And it was awesome. The whole bench stood up. It was awesome. I really, I was really playing like great basketball during that time. And um, yeah, so season comes around and we're two weeks away from the season. Um, so I'm going to label my junior year coach, Coach Y, and no, Coach X. So Coach X is my junior year coach. Coach Y is my senior year coach. Um, I'm not going to name any names. Um, I'm just going to tell the story how it is. Pretty much um, two weeks in, I kind of go up to um, Coach and we're Coach X and we're talking, blah, 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 and um, pulls me out of the starting lineup during practice. And I was like, all right. This is when uh, this is when I kind of lose my spot, and um, I'm never going to see it again. And I was right. So I was told, you know, yeah, you're going to get playing time, all this stuff. And first game comes around, you know. Let me pull out my notes real quick. So the first game, Coach – X mentions that he's going to play everyone and you know I've uh, I, obviously I've showed my skills I've showcased my skills and I thought I was going to, I was going to get in and you know it was versus Nordonia DJ's pumping great game like great at like great atmosphere like this was going to be a great game and I was so excited going into it like during warm-ups I was like all right like I'm ready for this like I'm built for this um, going through warm-ups, just feeling good. And, you know, my parents are in the stands, got my friends in the stands. I'm sitting on the bench. I'm like, yep, yep, like, uh, this is, this is going to be awesome. As soon as I get in, I can't wait to showcase my skills. First quarter comes by. Um, all right, it's kind of a close game. Um, second quarter comes by. All right, all right, like, you know, still kind of getting warm. Third quarter comes by. All right, all right. Fourth quarter, fourth quarter comes by. All right, there's a minute left in the game. Still on the bench, still have my warm-up on. Game over. Got zero time. Um, Coach X said he would play everyone, and I was the only one that didn't play. Out of every kid, I was the only one that didn't play, considering that he said everyone was going to play the first game. And that was that was hard. That, that was hard. I mean, my parents um, went home crying. I mean, when you, when your mother, your sister, and even your father are tearing up because they were so excited to see you play, they show up and you don't play at all. I mean, that's got to be the worst feeling ever. Um, just going home and hearing that my mom and my sister were crying because they didn't see their son play, and it's not even that like I was bad. It was literally because like 
I don't know. I, I don't know why. It's just so sad because my parents know how hard I worked and all the effort that I put in. And, you know, it's not like I was bad. It's not like, you know, I was undeserving of this. I, I, I worked hard. I thought I, wa- I thought I was deserving of it. But um, in the eyes of Coach X, obviously I wasn't. So the first game I didn't play. And two more games go by and didn't even see the floor. First three games, didn't see the floor once. My friends were coming to games, my family, extended family, and they didn't even get to see me play. I was just lost. I was confused. I was frustrated. And just looking back on those times, it's like, it's, it's just heartbreaking. Just being that kid that didn't love the game to the kid that worked his ass off. His ass off. The kid that wanted to succeed. People saw potential in him. He, he, he didn't even see it in himself. And people wanted to see this kid succeed. And he finally puts in the work, puts in the effort, grinds, grinds. Eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade. Now junior year, he's ready. He's ready. And this happens. First three games don't get put in. So I go to... Um, the JV coach, and who was Coach Y, Coach Y, and, um, you know, I was like, hey, Coach, like, you, like, can you help me get into this game? Like, I have to showcase my skills. This is the first home game. It's in front of a big crowd. Like, please, like, I just want some playing time just to, you know, just to get my name out there, just to touch the ball, to touch the court. That's all I wanted. And he said, okay, okay. So, you know, game comes by, big game versus North. Uh, Stadium is packed, and it's awesome. The vibes are awesome. I'm so excited. And at the same time, I was also nervous because – you know, I love seeing everyone at my games, but I don't know if I was going to play or not. So going off um, the first half, we were beating them by like 20. I mean, we were, you know, playing awesome. Starters played great. Um, come off the bench, and I was the 11th guy in. The 11th guy in. I played 11 minutes in the fourth game and scored 11 points. I was the second highest scorer. The second highest score didn't see the floor for the first three games. Come the fourth game, show up. I'm ready. I'm the 11th guy off the bench and dropped 11 points in, I think, either 8 or 11 minutes. Something around that. That's pretty impressive. The fact that I'm not even seeing the floor and I come in and contribute like that at a young age, that's beautiful. It was It was awesome. The next day, I go into practice. I ask Coach X. Well, actually, re- let's uh, rewind that real quick. After that game, I'm hugging my family. I'm like, man, like that felt great. They were so proud of me. My extended family was there. Um, they saw all of it. And it was just truly a blessing. It truly was. So, next day, I ask Coach X. I ask him uh, how I played. And, you know, he said it meant nothing. And that I will get in when I deserve it, and I have earned it. Um, hearing that as a 17-year-old kid, 16-year-old kid, um, hearing that your coach says your game meant nothing because that team was bad, and you'll get in and get meaningful minutes when you earn it and you deserve it. Um, yeah, it kind of definitely shut me down a little bit. Um, hearing that just and I was down, I was down, and I was isolated by my coach. Um, As a high school kid, being put down like that is horrible. Um, Just wasn't fun. And pretty much um, that was how it was for the whole year. That's how it was for the whole year. I have some more. Some more notes about this. Um, 
we're going against our rival brush. Uh, we were down by 30 at the start of the fourth. Down by 30. Um, the crowd tried to get me in the game. They wanted to see me get in. And I didn't get in until one minute left in the game. And the starters were still playing. Still playing. Down 30. Um, we went on a three-game losing streak towards the back half of the year. And we lost to a not-so-good team. Coach X pulls me into his office and he says, um, I'm frustrated with the players. You know, I need you to stay ready and you will start and get in the first half versus our next opponent. Next game comes. I'm working hard in practice all year and keeping it consistent, scoring, doing everything I usually do and giving it my all in practice because my practice is my game. That's what it is. I didn't get to touch the floor, so the practice was literally my game. It was my game. So I had to work as hard as I could and really showcase, you know, what I had left. Um, but it was hard going through all that mental stuff, just feeling isolated, feeling low, feeling like you're not good enough. I even tried to go play JV, and my and Coach X wouldn't even let me play JV because he said I was, I was a varsity player, but yet, like, it's like, okay, then why am I not getting in? It's, it was just a lot of questions, a lot of confusion, everything, really. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was wild. So I, um, the next opponent comes, and I get one minute in the fourth quarter. And that was the crowd getting me in the game. That was the crowd. The crowd was getting me in the game for that. Um, you know, didn't even see the floor. After being told I was possibly going to start. So, um, we, we play North again. This time we're at North and we're up by 20. And um, I get in the game with one minute left in the third quarter. And I finish the game with eight points. Haven't seen the floor in probably five or six games come off. Drop eight points. Give it my all. Maybe even drop two assists for sure. Um, it was crazy. And meanwhile, while I was playing in that game, uh, Coach X talked about my back, and he said, I wish I could pull him out. I wish I, I wish I could only play with four players right now. Keep in mind, I have no clue what I did to this man. I have no clue what I did to my team. Those that know me, they know who I am and um, the person that I am, and it's, it, was, it was very frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes as well, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, because that happened so long, long ago, but there was a lot of favoritism and, um, you know, a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, um, I was one of the only players that stayed after practice to work on my skills. Went to every game, open gym, um, every optional practice, um, it was just a terrible feeling. Um, whenever I would go talk to the coach, um, I would have to walk along with him. Like for those that are on YouTube right now, like here's like the coach, here's me. I would literally walk and I'd have to walk with him because he didn't want to talk to me. Um, it just didn't, it didn't really make sense. So that was my junior year. And just looking at it, it's just, it's just crazy. Um, I stayed after practice, put in the time, and, you know, to turn out like that. Going into my senior year, my goal was to play college basketball, and the only thing I had, I had was a two-minute highlight reel, a two-minute highlight reel from the five games I actually got playing time in, the five out of the 22, um, in, the, in the early scrimmages, before the season even started, I had a two-minute highlight reel. That was the only footage I had of me, you know, to send to college coaches. Like, those were the only two that I had. 
Only two minutes. Only two. I had nothing else. I had nothing else. So me um, trying to play at the next level, number number one, Coach X wasn't going to help me. He helped me the summer prior, you know, attended a camp. But that, but that was that was it. That was the only thing. And I had to pay for the camp. So like it was it was coming out of my own pocket. But I had a two minute highlight reel of me making layups, me shooting threes, me playing defense. Like I had that and I sent that to as many college coaches as I could. I just said, Hey, this is my highlight reel. I'm Marcelo, blah blah blah, a lot of stuff about me. I want to play at the next level. I'm interested in your program. Sent that to a bunch of college coaches and I got a lot of responses. Um a lot of D2, D3 interest, uh, a lot of emailing. And this was over COVID as well, uh, you know, because towards the end of my junior year, uh, we had to go home because, you know, COVID was happening. So at the end of our basketball season um, in February, March 2020, that was COVID. And um, I was doing virtual visits. I had two virtual visits touring the campuses and seeing the facilities and it was it, it was insane. Like me and my mom sat there just looking through just the schools. And keep in mind, I had a two minute highlight reel, and a, a, I had a few coaches that were interested in me, and they sent me on virtual tours, and you know they were emailing back and forth. So, you know, I was I was so excited every time I got an email from a coach. I told my parents, and I was just like, man, like you know, this was like the only stuff that I had, like. This was the only thing that was going to help me get to the next level. No one else was helping me. I had to make my own profile, my own video, my own, like, emails. Like, I had to create a whole new account. I had to email, like, make that a personal basketball email, follow coaches on Twitter. Like, I mean, I did everything in the book to try to get this to work and at least have some coaches interested in me. And I'm very blessed that the ones that were, you know, um, reached out, they, you know, were interested a little bit, and they wanted to see me play, and, um, yeah, it was, it was wild, it, it, it was honestly insane, but my senior year, I would say, was, was worse, not worse in a way, I mean, it can't get worse than that, but, um, it was, it was, it was kind of crazy. So going into my senior year that summer, we had camp, um, summer league, man, open gyms. I was dropping buckets, like boom, boom, like just coming off screens, bang, layup, bang, just, you know, playing the best basketball. CrossFit got me in shape. I was strong. I was fit. All my teammates and friends told me I put on some muscle. I mean, I was in the best shape possible. I was lifting good. I was eating good. Great mindset. And I was focused. Then, a little bit after July, I was dropping 30 in the open gym. Boom, boom, boom. Playing great. It's like July 22nd of 2020. And I'm playing open gym. Teammate drives. Boom. My finger snaps out and at the time i'm not realizing it. i'm like all right cool like you know ah oh, man that hurt my, my my finger's fine go down the court boom hit a nice little mid-range right after i shoot it oh man that thing just dislocated my finger was dislocated had to come off the side get ice didn't really realize i was injured until a few days later and then next thing you know i have to get surgery on my finger for dislocation and it was broken and after having that momentum, here comes the brick wall. Back to square one. Three months of recovery, I train myself to shoot with my right hand. Keep in mind, I'm a lefty. I'm training myself how to shoot with my right hand. My right hand. I mean... It was almost like a sign from God because, man, my right was horrible. My right was my right was okay, but since I was hurt, I could only use my right hand. So it definitely made it stronger, definitely made it better. 
But um, going through that it was hard. I remember texting my sister. I'm like, man. Keep in mind, too, also, I'm sorry. Um, coach Y is now our coach. Coach Y, who was the JV coach, Coach Y now becomes the head coach. Um, coach X retires. And, um, yeah, Coach Y is now the head coach. I'm a big fan of Coach Y. Coach Y told me um, at the end of my junior year that, you know, he's always got my back and, you know, he's looking out for me. And he did. He cared about me. He wanted to see me win. He wanted to see me on that court. He knew that I had that, I had that potential. And he really wanted to see that. Um and uh, I was very thankful, thankful for him during that time. I really was. Um, during the summer, he pushed me. He wanted me to work hard. And, and we had a great bond, a great relationship. But um, that was about to change once I got hurt. Um, I got hurt out three months, came back the day before tryouts. And we had a few coach, a few new coaches, and I told them before trials I said man I'm worried I'm worried that I'm gonna get hurt again kind of worried um kind of scared you know I'm playing again and it was just it was just way too quick to come back and my mind wasn't right yet and the coaches said oh you'll be fine you'll be fine but in the back of my mind like you know when you come off an injury like you're scared you're gonna hurt it again I mean I have me like my best friend towards ACL three times I mean really I, obviously I'm, I'm gonna be scared so um you know, they, they were like, oh, you're fine, you're fine, you know. And I feel like I never really got to adapt. Obviously, trials were good. Uh, first game comes around, and, you know, COVID's going on. We have to wear our masks on the sidelines, all that stuff. And um, only thing I can remember, the first game was okay. Didn't really play my best. And um, obviously, the coach had his favorites now that, um, you know, I was gone. He had his new favorites. He had picked his new group that he wanted to see succeed. And I started for the first three games. And, you know, I was just afraid to shoot the ball. I was kind of worried. Um, just to put a lot of pressure on myself to do well and to succeed. A lot of people wouldn't give up the ball necessarily. And, um, you know, obviously – if I'm not contributing, then I'm not going to get the ball. But um, there was a lot going on at, at, at that time. Obviously, my finger was hurting school where I was going to go to college because I wanted to play in college. And um, just the battle and practice to keep my spot. No spot was guaranteed with Coach Y. Uh, Coach Y made it known that whoever was the best scorer will be getting the most playing time the next game. And, um, yeah, Coach Coach Y gave, always gave the ball to the um, person that scored the most points. So the first three games, I didn't really contribute well. Uh, I mean, I probably scored like five, six points a game. Not very good at all. And uh, with the minutes I was receiving, Coach was kind of playing everyone. I didn't really get a lot of time to get warm or showcase myself. And as a scorer, you know, you need that chance to get warm. You need the opportunity to get warm, get a feel for the ball. Never really did. Um, and it was hard. It was tough. It was tough. Uh, you know, the last four practice, like the next four practice, at practice after the first three games, um, coach was just putting me against one of my best friends at the time. One of my favorite teammates ever. It was just tough because it was super inconsistent. And, you know, it it just it just it just messed with me. Because then I have to go in, I have to battle one of my longtime teammates, my longtime friends, and or battling for the spot and I get it that's how competition is, but when you're putting teenagers against each other and just like, you know, just fighting over it, man. Just creating that hatred creating that just negative energy against each other. Man, like, like looking back on it, like, 
I, I, I wasn't a fan of him. Like, we just had that tension. We just, like, we just, like, the Coach Y really made me just dislike him. And it sucked because he was one of my good friends. We shared so many good times together. And that year, we just put each other up against one another. And, you know, obviously, just the year was just very inconsistent. Um, we had a lot of interesting stuff going on uh, among the team. And, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. But I had a few great games in there, too. Um, you know, for example, I had a great game against Shaw High School, put up like 11 points. Uh, the playing time that I received in the next game, since I played good, I, I, I got the start. And then I would score like seven points, and then I get brought back to the bench. And being a senior during that time, you're already going through COVID, and it was just very hard. My, one of my best friends, he rode the bench the entire year. So he pretty much dealt with what I dealt with, um, you know, the previous year. He was going through the same stuff. He was a senior, and he didn't even play the game of basketball his senior year. Only time he got in was senior night. I mean, it's crazy. One of my best friends, man, loved him to death. And we had each other's back through all of that. A lot of a lot of my teammates did, and they were just kind of confused on what was going on. And, um, you know, it was – it, it was just crazy to me. Um, I remember after Madison, I was playing great. Uh, this was kind of towards the big, like the middle of, of the year, kind of on and off play time. And I remember I had five points going in the half. And I was like, yeah, I'm ready to turn up. Third quarter comes, and I airball four threes in a row. Like, I'm ready. I'm feeling it. Boom, airball. Come off. Boom, airball. Boom, airball. Boom, airball. Within the first, like, five minutes, talk about your confidence going down. And when you airball four threes in a row, you know, a good coach would keep you in, let you keep shooting, let you get a feel for the game a little bit more. Man, I got subbed right out. And I just go over to the bench. I kick the bench. I'm pissed off just with everything that's going on. and I'm, I'm just frustrated, man. And ever since that game, really, I didn't really see the court after that. I remember, I remember going home. I was crying. And I was like, man, like, it's over, like. I had a chance. Coaches were coming to the games. Coaches were a little bit more interested. And I lost it all. That game, I lost everything. Coaches didn't email me anymore. Coaches didn't want to hear from me. You know, coaches were ignoring my emails. They considered my highlights because they come to my games, but they didn't really care. Uh, I asked my coach to help me out with talking to schools. Nothing. And I saw my dreams of playing in college just, just break right before my eyes. Um, even though, you know, playing in college, looking back, isn't really all that. That was my dream because I wanted to prove everyone wrong. Everyone said I wasn't good enough. Everyone said I wasn't fast enough. Everyone that said that I was just a B player. I was one of the only people from travel basketball, me and four other kids, to ride out and make it to varsity. Four others. Four. And I remember going home and my parents were like, Marcelo, like, it's okay, it's not the end of the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But as a teenager, that was your dream, that was your goal. And I wasn't even doing that for me, that was for my dad. I wanted to do that for my dad. But we did have a lot of good times as well. Got to share senior night with my best friends. Had my career high. Um, was a homecoming king that night. Got to dance on the court at halftime with my friends. Um, and then 
first round of the playoffs. Um, we're losing. Coach puts me in, and I'm coming back, winning the game. Um, he was probably going to bench me the whole game, but we started losing, and then obviously, you know, I'm going to give it my all and end up winning the game. Go figure, right? Then I was three points away from 600 points in my career, and didn't even get to play in the playoffs. Played one minute. One minute in the second round of the playoffs, and that was that was it for my basketball career. Um, but looking back on it, um, just to kind of recap all that, junior year was was hard. It was rough. Um, senior year was tough as well. Seeing your dreams kind of collapse like that after working so hard and seeing everything you put in and being in the best shape, seeing your dreams just fall off like that. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I think I came to terms with not playing in college. And um, there was really three things that I learned. Um, you know, I learned that playing in college isn't, isn't everything. I'm a senior in college now. Um, looking back on that, it's crazy that I went through that at such a young age, but Definitely made me a stronger person, made me, made me a better person, and made me more compassionate with the people around me, more thankful for the people that I have in my life. Um, you know, experiencing that as a teenager, as a young kid, young adult, um, it's allowed me to work hard in everything that I do and give my best effort no matter what. Um, you know, same thing in life. You know, if I have a bad boss, I'm going to keep working hard. Just like I had a bad coach. I kept working hard. Same thing. Same thing. So I'm, I'm always going to keep working hard, that's for sure. Um, second thing I learned, keep keep your family close and keep and cherish those that were there for you during those hard times. Um, I cherish the people that have left my life, people that aren't in my life anymore. I'm still very thankful for them, and I'm very blessed that I had them during that time. Uh, my family, friends who are still with me today, um, you know, I'm so thankful for you and even today, you know, you made me the person that I am and keep the people that, you know, are with you, you know, keep them close because they really mean a lot to you. Um, and they mean a lot to me. Yeah, they mean, they mean, they mean the world to me. So I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, one thing I learned is resilience leads to future success, quote from my man Frank Leone, um, my father. And what that means is that I went through all those hard times, all those pretty much bullying almost, it was bullying pretty much, um, just stress, anxiety, the pressure, just everything I was facing during that time. You know, not knowing when I was in the play, not knowing when I was going to get in, but I was always ready. And, you know, I could have quit. I could have quit my junior year. Could have been done with basketball. Could have been done forever. Um, decided to stick it out. Got it. Coach Y, senior year. Didn't really go as planned. And, you know, I, I, I didn't quit. I didn't quit. I finished from start to finish. And, um... I gave everything that I had, everything that I had, and that's the, that's the one thing I can say. I gave everything that I had, and I guarantee you in the future it will lead me to future success because no matter how hard things get in life, no matter what comes my way, no matter what challenges I face, whether that's in work, school, sports, sports is over, work, school, family, relationships, money, everything, relationship with God. I'm going to find a way, and God's going to lead me through that, and I have faith in that. I really do. You know, for those that aren't religious, um, you know, you may have a person, may have a spiritual being that may lead you, or, you know, but me, for example, like, I have faith that I know everything's going to work out in the end, and I know for you as well, everything will work out in the end for you as well. You just have to believe. Um, and that's why I started my own basketball league, three-on-three, three, called Cello Summer Showdown started that after my senior year of high school and 
this year was our fourth year doing it, and we raised money for special sports and nonprofit uh, that helps kids with disabilities play or organize sports, and we did that. Uh, teams, rosters, game times, venue, film crew, interviewers, everything. I set all that up, and we did it. And you can go watch the videos on this channel because that was one of the best weekends of my life. And, you know, I realized playing in college isn't everything. It's what you do and you giving back to the community and you helping out others. You making an impact in others' lives. Yeah, playing in college would have been cool, would have been fun, but I guarantee you I impacted more lives doing this league than I ever would have playing you know, college basketball. Yeah, it would have been cool having family and friends there and saying that I did it, but man, I did this league to keep my friends close, to keep, you know, people together, keep my graduating class from high school together. And, you know, I'm so thankful for all of them. And it's not just me because without them, that league wouldn't have been possible. And I'm so blessed for that. I'm so thankful that everyone was a part of that great tournament this past summer. It's past June. But looking back on my story, resilience will lead to future success. There's a lot of hard times, a lot of good, a lot of bad, but um, came out strong. And, you know, hey, I'm blessed that it happened because it taught me a lot. And, you know, again, the story was not to put shame to anyone, to blame anyone, to, you know, you know, stir up the pot, stir up drama. I'm just telling you the story because. A lot of people around me didn't really know that about me. But I went through all that at such a young age. And I know a lot of people go through worse things in life. I know a lot of people have worse challenges, face a lot more adversity than I do. And, um, you know, I'm aware of that. But this, this was my story, and I thought I would share it with you. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot of people that are probably going through the similar thing, a similar thing. So if this advice helps you, whether that's in school, life, anything like that. But my quote of the episode and quote that I live by is resilience leads to future success. Because if you stay tough, you stay grounded, motivated, humble, good things will happen in the end. And everything will work out in the end. So that'll do it pretty much for this uh, episode hopefully you enjoyed and uh, you know what I never really accomplished my dreams of playing college basketball but um, I'm definitely living the dream for sure being able to be present in this moment and share the story with um, with with you all here we'll see you in the next episode that'll do it for this and uh, we'll see you later Peace.